Sometimes we are tempted to find excuses and complain, acting as if we could only be happy if a thousand conditions were met. To some extent, this is because our technological society has succeeded in multiplying occasions of pleasure, yet it has found it very difficult to engender joy. I've been asked to meditate with you on a section of the pontifical document, Apostolic Exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium. And the title of the, uh, the text, Evangelii Gaudium, as you well know, is The Joy of the Gospel. And in section 7, right at the head of that section, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, tells us what joy is, so that this joy of the gospel is indeed defined for us right at the beginning so that we know what we're talking about. He distinguishes the joy from happiness and pleasure. Because happiness and pleasure, according to the pontiff, is a teeter-totter kind of an experience. Happiness and pleasure, one day. Displeasure and unhappiness, another day. It kind of goes back and forth, back and forth. I'm happy today because it's sunny and 58 degrees out here in Chicago and the snow is melting. I'm sad today because we're expecting another 10 inches of icy sleet and snow this coming weekend. Happiness Pleasure, displeasure, and sadness are on this teeter-totter experience. And then the Pope tells us why. And he says very clearly it's because we are tempted to find excuses and complain because we act as if our happiness or our pleasure depends on the fulfillment of a thousand conditions. So in other words, happiness, sadness, pleasure, displeasure, are conditional experiences, and we're all conditioned, really, to live in that kind of teeter-totter world. Up and down, back and forth, happy, sad. And he's suggesting that the thousand conditions for such pleasure are multiplied because of our technological society that lets us to go anywhere we want on the internet, and lets us do whatever we want instantly and oftentimes these conditions that are met are conditions based upon the rapidity or the swiftness of our own desires being met almost instantaneously. And he's telling us that that is not joy. So what is joy? Joy obviously has to do then for this text, this pontiff, joy has to do with something that holds us at the center and that is not based on any kind of conditioned experience whatsoever. At the end of paragraph number, section number seven rather, at the end of section seven, he describes that joy comes in an encounter, in a relationship, in a living encounter with Christ. That knowing Christ at the center of our hearts gives us, as you would, a, a place where whether or not the thousand conditions are met or whether they're not met, there is an unflappable place right at the center of our hearts that never is shaken. It reminds me very much of that song, No storm can shake my inmost calm when to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is the Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? And at the end of this section 7, he's really clear, quoting his, his predecessor, Benedict XVI, he's really clear that to be a Christian disciple is not a matter of memorizing doctrines or knowing doctrines, nor is it a result of ethical choices, he says, or of high ideas in our minds, propositional truths. He says, rather, this experience of joy, the experience of the joy of the gospel, is an experience that comes when we allow ourselves to be ravished by Christ in a living encounter, in an eventing that gives our hearts a new horizon, a new purpose. So no matter if these thousand conditions are met or not met, in a spirit of detachment and simplicity, in a spirit of encountering God in our hearts, Joy is something that's always there.
in good times, in bad, in sickness, in health, for richer, for poorer. Joy is the experience deep in the soul that no storm can shake our inmost calm.